<laughs> Here we go. Like long lost friends, rodeos and late night bends, history before our time, round pens and pasture rides, cowboys of the Osage. I still can't believe every time I hear that, Jimbo, someone thought enough of this podcast to write us our own song. That's the craziest thing. I know. Howdy, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Cowboys of the Osage podcast, brought to you by the Ben Johnson Cowboy Museum, located in historic downtown Pahuska, Oklahoma. It's O'Cody over here, and as always, I got my co-host with me, Mr. Rodeo Historian himself, Jimbo Snively. Good to see you, Jimbo. Who do we have today? Hey, Cody Boy, it's good to see you, and it's just another great day in the Osage, man. And uh, we've got two of the top steer ropers in the country, their family, James, their dad, James, was a great steer roper, 60s, 70s, and 80s. And, of course, I'm talking about Guy and Gip Allen. Gip was a three-times national finalist, won the Ben Johnson right here in, in Pahuska twice, just a great roper. And his brother Guy is a... Uh, the most accomplished steer roper in the history of the sport. I mean, there's no other way of looking at it. 18 times world's champion. Just let that sink in a little bit. It's two of the most dominant steer ropers to ever live right here, Jimbo. Well, that's right. And uh, Guy also won, uh, went to the national finals 33 times, five times national finals average winner. And uh, we're just really proud to have him with us today. And uh, guys, welcome to the Cowboys the Osage podcast. Well, it's good, it's good to be here. I, it's a good thing my brother lived here. Probably wouldn't be up here, but but I had to come see him anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're proud to have him here. We we, we claim him now. <laughs> yeah, I bet you do. <laughs> we're dang yeah. sure proud of him around here. Hey guys, where did you guys grow up at? We're not sure about that. Oh, uh, we grew up at Santa Ana, Texas. It's where we grew up. Uh, I was born in Louisiana, but my mom and dad was raised there at Santa Ana and, and went to school there, but they went to work in, in uh, Oklahoma, down there by Allen, and then went out to Louisiana. And then for some unreason, mm-hmm. I don't know, they went to Mississippi. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's when my brother was born. Yeah, I was born in Mississippi. But then we all uh, came back to Santa Ana, and we graduated school there. And... Uh, then went to college at at uh, Ranger Junior College and and Sol Ross University at Alpine. So, but we're still around Santa Ana. I am, and uh, we still claim Gip all of, except when he goes to Holland for OU. <laughs> oh, that's the best part about him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, was your dad already roping when you guys started getting roping age, or when when did the family start roping? Yeah, Dad, he was roping. I know when when I started roping, Dad was already ro- had been roping. Yeah. Who influenced him in his steer roping, got him started steer roping? Do you know? Well, his, uh, our uncle, his brother, uh, he did. He's, he was uh, a good bit older than my dad. And then uh, uh, a fellow that shot a horse at Max Horn uh, was kind of his influences when he was a, a Young and and growing up, and then uh, or was going, uh, you know, I really don't know, but I know they're the ones that got him started and and uh, roping and stuff. I remember seeing him around 1965, maybe at the finals, maybe the first time I was ever around your dad. I was he started a, a pro rodeo in I think '66, I believe. Okay, maybe it was '66, and I was thinking I saw him at the finals, but. At Benita in 65, but it must have been 66. I think so they had it two years in a row over there. Right. Did you guys travel around with him when you were kids to all the big rodeos? We did. Uh, quite a few. Yeah. yeah, quite a few years. It was, uh, I don't know, we'd, we made the finals. They say all three of us in one year. I don't remember what year it was. But, uh, but 80, yeah, we. 83. 83. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we traveled uh, together mostly. With him in early '80s, and then him and Gip moved to Oklahoma, 
in the eighty four. Eighty four. And brought some cattle up here and uh Gip he built a TP and stayed. And, <laughs> yeah. and uh daddy he came back. He was here for fifteen years up in uh Bonita. Bonita, which is um but he he run he had some cows, him and a partner run some cows over at Bonita for about fifteen years and then moved back. Gip he just stayed back, couldn't oh, find him. Yeah. <laughs> oh. What you taste that Oklahoma water by it's hard yeah. to leave. <laughs> when y'all were growing up, did y'all go to Cheyenne with him when y'all were boys? Oh yeah, we yeah. went uh our sisters went a few times, but me and Gip usually went all the time when uh, we what all did y'all get into up there when you were kids? Just roping the dummies and uh, riding horses, riding dad's this horses, you know, right. just whatever. You know, he was the, the director, you know, when we were uh, when we were roping, you know, so we had to help him uh, sort the steers and and things like that at Cheyenne when we were, you know, young. Of course, I don't know, I, I say young, we were probably 19, I was 19, 20, yep, was little bit younger, probably in his diaper a little bit. But. A little, oh. old, little older than that, <laughs> about 18, 19 year old. Yeah. But, Who were some of you guys' heroes when you were just kids around the ropes, and so besides your dad? Mine um, was Sonny Davis, old and young, Walter yeah. Arnold. Uh, that's who I kind of liked, you know, mm-hmm. rope. And then, of course, when we heard of Roy Cooper, you know, I was a few years younger than him, but, right. you know, he was a, he was such a, Dominant factor, mm-hmm. you know, when we were kid, when we were junior rodeo, and you know, he just he didn't beat him, you know. Right. We just right. so. I always tell Cody about Sonny Davis. You know, yeah. he was the one you just who when he got ready to back in the box, people just stopped and oh, yeah. went yeah, to I watch mean, him rope. You know, yeah, I like Walter Arnold mainly a lot, and then uh, Tuffy Thompson. Yeah, well, Tuffy was yeah. a good hand, and Lewis Kincaid. He, yeah. New Mexico. Yeah. What did you take away from Sonny's roping guy, being him one of he, him being uh, one of your role models? Well, it seemed like to me Sonny always sit, you know, went went for first. You know, it was like, you know, if he had to be, you know, back then, you know, it had to be twelve or fifteen or whatever, you know, which was a fast time back then. You know, he'd do it. You know, but sometime when he thought he had to be thirty. You know, it was it was a different story, but it was like whenever around, let the average take care of itself. That's pretty much his motto, you know. So that's <laughs> you took of, after him pretty darn good. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I I, uh, I liked about Sonny. You know, you know he was he was just you know, I, you know, I got to go a little follow each other a few times. You know, we didn't didn't go in the same rig, but. We'd stop at different, you know, same places and stay, and he'd drive about 55, and I'd have to get there a little faster. And I said, Sonny, they're going to gonna have to speed up a little bit. Said, they ain't turned one out on me yet. <laughs> so, anyway, but it, it was fun. We we got to stay at the same hotel. We got to hang out with him quite a bit. So, it was it was fun for me to, to be with him, you know. But it was the most fun, you know, was going with Gip, roping – you know, we team up together, and and uh, of course we grew up went to school together. I mean, we're just we're just always together. You know, yeah. had the same truck, same horses, right? Everything. So that was about the only way I could beat him is they put me on the best horse. You know? <laughs> yeah. So that's a, about the only way it, it would ever happen. What about Olin? What did you take was, away from his roping to be Olin in your top was three? Just so uh, I don't know. Perfect. I mean, he just, you know, he didn't miss. He went and tied everything down. Uh, it wasn't like he went for a go round or, or nothing. He just he went and caught everything. Everything was smooth, and uh, just like a a good average roper. You know, not to say he didn't place in rounds or nothing, but he, you know, he he didn't come across there to win rounds like Sonny. He just went and tied them down to me. Yeah. And then they both said Walter Arnold. That's uh, that's something interesting. So, what do you guys take away from Walter Arnold's roping? With me, Walter traveled with Dad when we were young, so we met Arnold. I mean Walter, you know, and we got to know him. So, 
with him his rope and you know he was a he was more of an average rope okay. too but yeah. it was kind of go around but he uh he just was i guess just you know dad traveling with him to me i would give i was he answered his own question yeah what do you well, think man, about him get walter, walter i mean it's like guy said he went he went and tied them down you know a lot of times and he would he would try to be fast too, but majority of his runs he he tied everything down, you know. And when it was could be fast, he'd be fast. But I was just like going going them tying down, and like Lewis Kincaid, he he would uh, tie them fast, you know. He'd go for first a lot of times, but just their style a lot, you know. Run up there and rope them and set that trip. Who was that third one on you, Gip? We had Walter uh, Lewis. Tuffy, uh, Tuffy, Tuffy Thompson. Yeah. Tuffy Thompson. Tuffy Thompson. Yeah. What do you take away from his roping, Gip? <clears throat> oh, I don't know. Just uh, a lot of it. But being young, guy and them, dad was already roping. And I, do, I got to go up and stay with Roy Tuffy Thompson a lot. And I hadn't really tripped that many steers. And he'd let me get on his horse. And I got tripping more steers when I was up there with him. You know, stayed with him. He had a boy pretty close to our age in between one a little older and one one a little younger and we uh just hung out and roped up there and he kind of let me get to tripping steers a lot you know at home dad guy always roped the horns and i, I roped the hills and i didn't trip very much <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you like us, you couldn't afford to cripple too many cattle. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, it was always a luxury to get to tie <laughs> right. one down at my house, you know. But right. I always heard Guy tied down a lot of cattle. That's we the did. reason he got to be – one of the reasons he got to be so much better. He just naturally better than all of us at steer roping. So when you guys were young, what was a practice session like at y'all's house growing up with your dad and you two? And who else? Who, who knows who else might be there practicing with you? It was usually just uh, there wasn't many people around where we lived that that I, I'm not going to say it wasn't cowboys. They they had uh, cows, and, but there wasn't a lot of ropers. It was just me and Gip and my dad. Pretty much growing up as you know, it was in that county or around. Would it James was, coach on y'all right there, right oh, then, right there? What oh was yeah, that? I mean yeah. he he coached on us. He was you know our our coach, but he really. Let us do our own thing. I mean, he let us rope like we wanted to rope, you know, and he didn't say, well, you had to do it like this. But he, if it wasn't working, he would say, you know, we need to, you know, do it a different way, you know, to make it work. And so he kind of let us do it the way we wanted, you know, and uh, and that's the way we did. Me and Gip, we rode I don't know how many horses. horses. Daddy, they worked, and he'd uh, – he'd, Rode outside horses and had uh, bukus outside horses, and uh, we'd ride them and log them mm-hmm. and everything. But we didn't rope them until he got home, mm-hmm. and mom would cook supper, and we'd usually out in the arena, and and she kept it warm, and we'd come in about twelve one, two o'clock in the morning, and she'd still have it warm, <laughs> and, and we'd eat. But we had a lot of horses. We rode a lot of different horses yes. growing up. Just because of him uh, having them to train, you know, mm-hmm. and we rode some good ones, and we rode some that wasn't so good. Yeah, did you tied a lot of cattle on them, or break we away did most back of then. Yeah, yeah. Yes. we did. We had uh, when we started, we didn't have a lot, but there for a few years we had a, a lot of uh, Hereford, uh, like a lower class Hereford mm-hmm. cattle mm-hmm. back then. I mean, right, and uh, we tied a a lot of cattle. Uh, down and then we started having some schools and met uh, a guy named uh, Rocky Reagan down there at Eagle Pass, and uh, he had uh, he sold Mexican steers and he got into on the rope steers and we'd go down there to have a school and we'd just go pasture get in the pasture mm-hmm. and pin some and and uh, go to roping them and tie them down and I mean no plaster no not I mean it's just whatever came in right. the pen that's what we roped and. Uh, so we we did that. Had school that had a lot of steers, you know. But at home, yeah, we tied yeah. several now. And that's kind of mainly when I kind of got to the tripping. The tripping is at them schools because most of the time 
I just team roped at home a lot, you know, yeah. when I was younger. And then we went to going to them school. They'd put them schools on, and I'd be there, and I got to rope and go right. tripping the steers. Yeah. What would y'all do to start a horse when y'all started so many of them? Oh, usually drove them. We drove them a lot. Walked behind them with lines and teach them to, to woe, and then we'd get on them and ride and get off of them and let them go by us or walk away from us and get the lines and just drive them around. We drove them around. So you, you drove them to teach them voice commands to, to listen to you, and uh, would you smooch them to keep going or tell them yeah, to stop? We'd, or? we'd you know, cluck to them to go or just kind of so shake the reins at them to, to get them to moving and then go for – you know, sometime one step, sometime go to the other arena just to get them to listen to you. Then we logged a lot of horses. We, we I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. Um, I know what logging a horse is. I don't know how you logged a horse, guy. So can you explain to everybody, you two, we, what uh, logging a horse is? And maybe some guys that do know what logging a horse is, maybe what y'all's log setup was, you well, know, they're, just to maybe help of, some young guys out there. A lot yeah. of different ways that people do it. You know, of course, your dad, uh, the way he, he did it, I, oh, I was, always said that your dad, his horses would pull down a barn if he hooked yeah. them to it. You yeah. know, and I had horses that that didn't pull it as much, you know, but I always wanted that. Wanted them to be strong, you know. Rocky always had strong horses. and uh, But us, we... Uh, we just kind of went in a circle around, and then we would pull out, kind of like, you know, when I was young, they said, you know, get off between the second jerks, you know. And and to me, you never got a second jerk with a log because the first jerk is when you when you got a hold of the steer, and then the next jerk is when they hit the ground. So you want to be in your side when they hit the ground because it, you know, to help your horse, you know, come. So we... At the way we learned to do it, it was kind of teaching people at our schools to go uh, like in a stirrup, and this is a steer on the ground, and you just pull out and get your leg out. And we didn't do it fast. You know, we we loped a little bit, but at a school, you know, when people learn, and we, we pretty much just trotted and let them trot and let it slow down where they could get their leg out and teach a horse, you know, what you're doing to stay in there. Because it was hard, we'd go to the right, but you wanted your horse in the left lead. So it was, you know, kind of hard because they'd want to drop right there, and we didn't didn't really want them dropping. You didn't let your horses drop out of there? Mm-hmm. So, but like I say, you know, uh, we, I always wanted my horse to pull like Rocky's. I mean, Rocky's horse would, I mean, felt like, to me, you could hook him onto anything, and that horse would just pull it, no matter what. He'd die trying, you know. A few times they didn't stop pulling, Jim. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's a problem. <laughs> well, that's, that's the way it is. Yeah. That'll happen every now and then. That's what those jerk lines are for. Uh, yeah. yeah. So if you were to have any advice on someone on stringing the front leg on a steer, what oh. would that be, guy? Because, Jimbo, I can't tell you how many times I've seen Guy Allen run by that leg on the steer where... 99 times out of 100, anybody else would have pulled their picking string down on their hand and totally messed up the run. And he never got flustered. He went ahead and strung him, never drew his string down until he had the the well, foot in his hand, mm -hmm. basically, and uh, still won a lot of go rounds with what would be called a missed stringing, I would think. But he never, never really did fully commit to stringing him until he had that foot in his hand. It just, I, would, uh, I don't know... Uh, what I'd try to do was would uh, go down there and try to sidestep, you know, I not don't turn and run, but to sidestep like going down to him, and then try to run my my right, I mean my left on the left side, my left foot at his at his front leg is where I'd try to to run him, and really the foot would be in the middle of your. Of your growing really is where I wanted that his front leg because when I bent down the string, that's where I wanted it to string him, and that's what I did. Did y'all tie a lot on the ground growing up? Oh, lay them down on their side or pull them on a sled or we put them on a sled, but 
the sled, sometimes they, it was hard to keep them on it. A yeah. lot of time we just laid them down yeah. and held them and, mm-hmm. and run down there in time, you know. But it, we at the school, we put them on the sled. The, yeah, the schools, we had them on the sled a lot. But, but you we, were probably back then stringing the bottom leg. Yeah. Uh-huh. When did you start stringing the top leg? I, just on the left side, yeah. uh, I strung the left. Me and Cody oh. argue all the time. I, I don't see where it's any faster. but Well, on the left side, if your horse is working, that that bottom leg should be covered up. Mm-hmm. And uh, if they're on the right side or, you know, to tie right, right hand, if the horse is coming back like he should, that bottom leg should be out and closer to his back legs. Mm-hmm. You know, the front leg is like mm-hmm. up front and his back when, or his but on the left side of that horse is coming to the left like he's supposed to. That, mm-hmm. that bottom leg should be covered up yeah. or pretty close, and that's why I strung the I strung the top one on the left side and right. the, the bottom right. one on the right. I see. I never strung a top leg in my life. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was after. I mean, I didn't win anything either. But Roy, you know, he kind of started the the top leg top pretty right. much. Right. I seen Sonny, you know, time like a calf. Yeah. A lot, you know, when he was, but I couldn't ever stretch out and tie one like he, you know, he right, did. But right. Roy, he tied the front leg. I went home and I tried it, tying that front leg, and, and uh, thought, well, I got it, you know. And then I go to the roping and everything kick loose, and you know, they said, well, you can't tie that. Well, Roy's doing it, <laughs> right? You know, yeah. why can't I? Right. right. Anyway, it. But I got the tying on the on the left side. I tied the top leg. Yeah. Well, you can go to the steer rope now. Like I've been to Ben Johnson the last two years, and you count on one hand all the uh, bottom legs to get strung. Yeah, yeah. You know? not very many. Nope. There's still a few guys that string that bottom leg on that right side, right Ben side. Fisher being one of them, and that guy's pretty hard to beat, Jimbo. Yeah. yeah. Him and Scott Snedeker. Scott uses that bottom mm-hmm. leg on that right. Yeah. Scott, you talk about a steer roper there. That guy, mm-hmm. he's the complete package. About, mm-hmm. about like Guy Allen right mm-hmm. here. Yeah, he's he's tough to beat. Must be the red hair on that deal. It might be, yeah. That's the only thing I can figure. He called we call each other Bubba. So <laughs> anyway. What was the first year you guys made the finals? Where was it? First year I made the finals was eighty three and it's there at Laramie, Wyoming. And that was the first year that a father and two sons, sons made, made the finals, finals ever? Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Did y'all know the very first father son that made the national finals was Jim Snively and Joe Snively? Oh, really? It was at the first national finals. That's the only reason I know. Oh, <laughs> no, it was the first father son combo. Oh, right. Oh. Yeah. It's just a small world over here. It is. Yeah. It is. It's just it a was. real small world. I made it in 77, and it was at Laramie. What was it like roping up there at Laramie? Cold. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Might be raining. It could be it snowed one year up there, but it was it was usually windy, or cold, or raining. Um, very, very seldom was it hot. <laughs> did they? Uh, when you guys were up there roping in the finals in Laramie, did they have the pair mutual bedding at that time? Yeah, on the steer roping. Yeah, it took sixteen to the finals. Them them years. So they could have two heats of eight. Yep. Mm-hmm. Who would handicap the steer ropers back then? Do you know? No, I don't. Uh, uh, I don't think they handicapped them any. They just kind of, you just kind of went and bet, and a lot of people would kind of go see what they had drawn, and then they'd go kind of want to. Well, I think got, they'd have to have some odds to them, though. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how it worked. I never yeah. did see it. No, well, they, was it was. It wasn't really any odds. odds. They just put you in. Groups of eight. eight or at the that Hyde Merrick, he uh, he kind of I guess was running the deal up there from Wyoming, and he had the steers. And anyway, he I guess he kind of set them. Uh, but at the finals, you know, you roped and well, now you rope in order. But back then, you know, they just put you in, and like you're saying, they might have grouped you. You know, I don't know. Okay. Heck if I know either. Yeah, I wasn't there. All either. I know is 77 was a good year. Guy's first year. I was born in 77. Yeah, it don't get much better than that, Boy, Jimbo. <laughs> man, oh, man. Yeah. That'll, that'll be on a sign somewhere. Yeah. It ought to be. How many different places has the finals been where you two have made it? 
just Laramie and and uh, Guthrie at the Lazy E. And that was me. The, yeah, two for me. Amarillo, Hobbs, Hobbs, New Mexico, and then uh, back to Moline. Well, back to the Lazy E and then to Moline. I didn't go to the one at Paul Huska or Benita or the Pecos or what was the other one in New Mexico too? Uh, Clayton. Clayton. Clayton was Clayton. yeah. Or, yeah, Clayton was the first first one first Clayton. first two were in Clayton. Then he went to Laramie for one year. Mm-hmm. Then he went to Douglas for one year. Then he went to Pahuska in sixty three and sixty four. Then went to Venita in sixty five and sixty six. Then went to McAllister in sixty seven and sixty eight. Then went to Pecos, Pecos. in sixty nine and seventy. Then went back to Pahuska in seventy one and seventy two. And then went to Laramie and I lost track of it after that. <laughs> yeah. Well Laramie it stayed in Laramie for yeah, or, until, uh, until 80, it went to eighty four. Right. Um, Boy, that was a class of steer ropers at nineteen eighty four. First national final steer open at the Lazy E. Mm-hmm. What did you guys think about the Lazy E when they first opened that thing up? It seemed like it was <laughs> built just for steer roping. Yeah, is what it, it seemed it like it was. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, my dad went down there and helped Ed. Ed wanted to wanted to put them on, and Dad he was the director, and he went and. Told him that he needed, you know, a big arena and and uh, wide. And Ed said, "What we need? We're going to build it." And uh, Daddy, uh, I guess he had a set of horns on a bale of dummy or something. And anyway, he uh, they let him throw the first loop at it. And uh, so he he still had the still has that plaque. He don't have the rope. I probably used it, but <laughs> but he does still have a, a plaque of the first loop. Thrown at the lazy. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. That's pretty cool. What about the, uh, what size of rope did you use? What size? Because you used a little bit larger than most guys. I did. I used 11.4, which yeah. that's what I grew up using. And yeah. 11.0, well, that's kind of, if I could, the last years I went was still 11, 11.4. But uh, anyway, that's what we got. Uh, we got most of our ropes from, uh, Callaway, Robert Callaway, uh, he we liked his treat and how they were the best. We used some Dub Grants, which was good, you know, back. And uh, I still got some of them eleven fours. And uh, but uh, did you use any nylons when you started? No, sir, I didn't. Okay, uh, they just said they had too much stretch. Yeah, you know? I didn't know if anything else was available right. when you first started. Or that, when I started. A lot of people use DAC, right? Right. right. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, we, of course, we use Polly. Mm-hmm. Sonny Davis and a few of them used a, I don't know if it's a sixty nine that that grass rope mm-hmm. or Manila, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, uh, well, the steers were smaller. Mm-hmm. Of course, they were bigger than they are now, but they would right. use a, a grass rope right back then, and and uh, but that's what me and Gip. We rope with was right. was pretty much the the Callaways or the Dub Grants. Right, right. Yeah, I think I used Grants when I was roping. Mm-hmm. You got to be about a roping son of a gun to rope steers with a grass rope, big old Manila rope, <laughs> yeah. don't you, guy? Yeah, I would think. You know, yeah. I mean, it. They don't stretch I, any, and then they they just not very user friendly. No matter what kind of weather's going on, it don't <laughs> seem like. I mean, you can't keep them good. You know, yeah. You know, put it under your hood of your truck. Yeah, you're always doing something. To, <laughs> Leave it too long, or, yeah. you know. Then put some put a wet rag in there to get moisture to make it get hard right, yeah, again. Right. And so, yeah, it, I don't know. Of course, me and Gip, we really didn't till I was probably seventeen, sixteen. We team rope. I mean, team we rope. rope yeah. You know, we logged Daddy's horses, and uh, we did all that. Drove them. Why he is at work, either at, you know, punching cows or, or driving a dozer, whatever it took, you know. And we we usually just team rope, me and Gib did. And then, then I got to tripping, and and then we, we kind of left, and Gib was still in school because that's the year I graduated. And Gib was still in school, so he just stayed there and team and roped. Team <laughs> roped. Yeah. He went around yeah. and team roped, and then, like, I don't know. When he really started, but when he did, it, it was a few years after. Yeah, you know, and at them them schools, he got putting on them schools. 
I think the first rodeo I entered was Cheyenne in 78, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, 78, 70, no, 79, I think it was. And I hadn't hardly been tripping any steers. But How'd you get along there, Gip? Oh, not that good. I think I tied one down, but <laughs> didn't win no money. <laughs> Gip, he, he placing the bulldog in up there, and the yeah. thought he was going to win all around. Uh-huh. But... It didn't didn't work didn't, didn't work uh, out. He Houston. He went around at Houston and come back high man and steer dog fell on him. And uh so he was he was he Well I never knew you're a big time bulldog I didn't either. Yeah. Learn something every day. Uh, what yeah. about the timed event? Time you ever event. had a timed event, Gip? Yeah. I was there the first year I had it and I forget how many years, quite a few. He went and, twenty I don't know, probably 27 or 8 times. He this went. is quite a... What about you, Guy? How many went, times you entered the time? I went about 25, and then I quit a year, and I went up there and helped him, and then they got taught me into going again. I went two or three more years. And, and what do you got to do to get ready for something like that? You know, uh, when I did it, and you know, you try to practice all the events, you know, and you kind of leave your main event not practicing, and it seemed like you done the worst in that one, yep. you know, to me. And then uh, a few years, I just went and worked out, you know, just went to the gym and uh, worked out. Just because mainly you get so sore, you know, from doing stuff. Mm-hmm. But I bulldogged a little bit in college, but you, I wouldn't call it bulldogging. I just kind of caught them and uh-huh. fell down and got up, and they wallered around. I threw them, you know, but I wouldn't like Gip. I mean, he... He could kind of get a hold of one and bring him around and throw him. But I, it looked like, I don't know, when I bowled up, it wasn't very pretty. So. <laughs> Guy, he'd always think about entering, entering the timed event, and I had this picture of him bulldogging. Yeah. And uh, I think he's landing in front of the steer, and the steer jumping <laughs> over him. And uh, I said, I'm going to show him that picture every time he right. tries every to time he get ready to about it. enter it again. Yeah, yeah it yeah. was. My bulldog wasn't wasn't good. Uh, was that your worst event over there, guy? You know, seems like the, healing gets a lot of guys. I don't know if it probably, got you or not. It's probably the most was the healing. You know, just you know, I I tell them today I can put that rope just about anywhere you want it, but between the front and the back, I have more trouble putting it <laughs> in there than any place. I mean, I can throw it over the building or or wherever, but in between there is the hardest. But probably the healing and bulldog was, I rode a horse at uh, Scott Quicks, a little black horse that he had for several years there. And, you know, I don't think I ever missed on him. He just, I don't know, he was he was good uh, for me, you know. I always healed way better on a horse that was cheating me real bad, but just because I maybe had to follow through a little bit better to, to get there, but the dally was no good on them horses that were cheating me no real bad. Yeah. So one way or the other, that healing was getting me too. Right. Yeah, it, it still does. Me. Mm-hmm. What was the first year you won the world, guy? Seventy-seven. The first year you went to the finals. Mm-hmm. No. Who was the race between that year? You know, or was there even a race? Was that the start of your dominance? Uh, back in seventy-six and seventy-seven, whoever won the final, the most money at the finals, was the world champion. The year I won it in '77, I believe Buddy Cockrell maybe was in the yeah. in the lead going into it, uh, and of course had more money won than I did, but I won the most at the finals. I win, I placed four or five rounds, or win four or five rounds, and win third in the average, I believe, and uh, won the most money. And uh, Charlie Lynn was next to me. I get, I beat him by just few hundred dollars and wasn't much like I think I win maybe 3,000 he won 2,500 I mean that's how much he paid him. <laughs> what did what what made him decide to do it that that way those two years guy well, did you ever done, find out about four I think okay I, I I think they did I know it was I know <clears> Charles <throat> good and me and Kenny call I know it was three won it like that did Gary Gary no, Gary, I, think, I think Gary won it all year, I believe. Yeah. But anyway, there was about three or four years that they, they did it like that. That's just how they did it. That's how they – and 
I, I mean, it's whoever was hot them two days, mm-hmm. you know, was pretty much, you know. I mean, buddy, and back, you know, back then, I mean, Cheyenne meant so much, you know. If you didn't didn't place at Cheyenne, mm-hmm. you didn't make the finals a lot of time. Uh, but whoever won Cheyenne pretty much was in the lead going to the final, you know. So Cheyenne was pretty much – Cheyenne was – uh, what you call the national finals or the world the champion, champion back then? You know when I started, there's only like eleven rodeos. Yeah, so that's what I say. I think there's like eight, eight, eleven rodeos when it started. Started going so when it was still open. Yeah, if you didn't draw something at Cheyenne, why like, you, you just have luck. Yeah. It was a long time there for a long time, even up into the '90s. If you won Cheyenne, you pretty well punched your mm. ticket to yeah. the finals. Mm-hmm. But it's, yeah. it's totally changed now. Holy moly. I yeah. remember when you went a go around Cheyenne, you was going to make the finals. finals. Yes, yeah. Sir. Yeah. yeah. There's several guys that have done that. Yeah. But it it was there for several years. Whoever won Cheyenne was sure enough the world leader. Right. Uh, but them them years, I mean, I don't know. I, I wouldn't take nothing for it, you know, being yeah. 77. But, I mean, Buddy Cockle was in the lead, then, you know, right. I'm sure. Right. I don't know what he'd done at the final. Couldn't tell you. Right. Don't remember. Right. But uh, it was that's the way it was. Yeah. What's and the last year you won the world, guy? Uh, two thousand five. Believe two thousand five. Wow. Seventy seven to two thousand five. That's a lot. That ain't very many world championships for anybody else, right there, Jimbo. Eleven in a row, I think. Yes, sir, it was eleven in a row from ninety one to two thousand and two. I believe. Yeah. yeah, maybe so. You know, that's a record. I, I don't think it'll ever be broke as 18 world championships in one event. I just can't see that ever being uh-huh. broke. Now, Trevor's got, what, 26 or had 26 world titles all together. And that could possibly be, be broke. Somebody working two or three events. I mean, it's, it's it be may tough. not, I but it's tough. possible. Very, very tough. I don't think that that 18 is even possible. Uh, it doesn't seem possible to yeah. me yeah. for anybody to dedicate their life <clears throat> yeah. that much to one sport. And uh, there's a lot of guys that can rope now, you know. Yeah, there's a yeah. lot. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it would stop Guy Allen from winning today <laughs> right. on the amount of guys no. that can rope, but it does seem like there are a lot more checks given out to different guys throughout the year than, than there used to be. You know, it used to be just the same old group of guys taking all the money. And there's a little bit, there's a, there's a handful more in them now in every event, event. for sure. Yep. You look down the list in the calf roping or the steer roping or the team roping or anything. <laughs> right. You got to sweat most of those guys. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. more of them. That sure can beat you. Yeah. What size of strings did you use, guy? I can not even tell you. Don't even know what size yeah. they were. No. Were they bigger than most people's? Littler than most people's? No. Oh, no. We started out with the grass strings. Yeah, we started out with the grass. The grass. And they were like you say with the ropes. You know, you had to put them in there and with a wet rag and then you had to get them out lay them in the sun and, you know you had to did you have to make your own grass strings then no we no, did we, we did we they had them made it and buy them i watched them make them they're not hard to make you know what i mean it would be no. for me but if somebody with knew the, how to make them could make with them with the quick, mac tires know. they did yeah it is yeah. sunny he had some and rolling and, but we 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 got ours mostly from that king's gallery yeah. up there, there where we got our strings, and uh, and then we started to using the two ply nylons, mm-hmm. and uh, they were, I couldn't tell you what size, five sixteenths maybe or something like that. I don't know. Now have they changed much, or is that pretty much what they're using now? They're probably using a little smaller. Just keep getting smaller now. now. Yeah. Maybe a little stiffer. Yeah. So I just I didn't like them real stiff because hurt my hands. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Like them a little softer. A lot of the old-timers didn't like them because they didn't think they held as good, you yeah. know. With those big grass strings, you know, just a pretty good wrap and a half right. hitch would hold the lot. Yes, sir. Alan Keller used a, a big old cotton string. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, boy, I mean, it would hold, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. How many times did you hold the world record for the fastest run, guy? Do you even know? I don't know. Uh, I tied one at... I'll put in seven seven. It was a jackpot, but my dad was flagging, and my mom was keeping time. <laughs> I'm not sure, you know, if it was all legal. But I can tell you one. I was there. 
telling a steer, Duncan, Oklahoma. He come rolling in, big four door semi, maroon semi, big <laughs> fancy living quarters trailer. Listening to Robert O'Keen, jumps out of that deal. How long were you that day? Seven nine. Seven nine. Yeah. Set the world record. I tell the steer yeah. out that day. Yeah. The only reason I remember it so well is because the first time I was ever charging in charge of the steers by myself, yeah. <laughs> Jimbo, without my dad there, he had to stay in right. Diamond over right. at the rodeo. Uh, I was I tied one in Deadwood, South Dakota, in, nine, in seven nine, and that one at Dun Duncan was the first one, and then Deadwood. Uh, I've tied several in eight flat mm -hmm. and uh, some eight ones, but. That the one I can say the one in Taupo was a seven seven. It was, it was a jackpot. And I know. I think Rocky Patterson tied one in seven six or seven eight here at the Roan Horse years ago when it was having some jackpots. So, you know, Her, who held who, who holds it now? Cody Sheck. Cody Sheck. I was there. Seven, Fort Smith. Yeah. Seven, seven six wasn't it? And it was a heck of a run. Yeah. But you know there were eights and nines not placing that day. Yeah. It was such a just a fast set up rodeo in that mm -hmm. little bitty kind of a coliseum deal they had there in Fort Smith. Yeah, I just went one time, I think, there. To, I went there in team rope before, but just the rope steers, I just went one time. I wasn't there that year that he tied it in 7 6. Or I remember when Sonny Davis tied 111, I think, at Post, Texas, and they just thought that was just, uh, you'll yeah. never be beat. I mean, that's just unbelievable. You know, somebody uh, tied 111. You know, uh, Charlie Lynn, when, you know, he was. He was like the closest my age, and he's 10 years or so older than me, but he tied one in, at Douglas, or no, at Gillette, in 10, five or six or something, and they thought that was, you know, and it was back then. It was, it was right, right. but the first one that was ever tied in nine, tied in, at uh, Douglas in nine five at, uh, at the rodeo there. Charlie Lynn was the first to tie one in 10, and then I tied one at nine at, Douglas, you put two two wraps and a half hitch on some of them. Probably or? not. Yeah, <laughs> I remember when you tied one. I thought in nine here at the Husk at that uh, rope and uh, at Hall of Fame rope and that deal uh, with Bob Wills reunion. You remember that? And you won a yep. horse trailer, guy. You won the horse trailer there. I was right, roping right. in it. And I thought you tied your last year in nine there, but I and I'm pretty out. sure you put two and a wrap, two and a half, two wraps and a half hitch on him. Well, I guess where I pretty much put one. Mm -hmm. A lot, but except at the finals, you know, and she's in the average. But right. Yep. Dad yeah. wasn't real happy with that. It's, <laughs> yeah. He kind of wanted to two wrap. <laughs> right, right. But, yeah. He was. He didn't like the wrap and hooey. Right, right. Yeah, I tied one. We was at Clovis one year, and I tied one nine three, and I go, man, this is gonna be good. Yeah. Still, two ropers later, T Woman come out. He was nine two, and then right after that, guy come out, and he's nine one. So. Yeah. I barely even got out of the arena, and I was already sitting third. Yeah, I that song. <laughs> was that in that outdoor arena right there? Yeah, outdoor well, arena. Well, that was there. a fast setup, though, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It just seemed like that there, roping was always a fast roping. There at Clovis, you know, if uh, the the best horse that ever worked, you know, Clovis could make it work. He <laughs> yeah. wouldn't work. Yeah. You know, I mean, that, <laughs> that big, big grand grandstand, stand. and you're mm -hmm. going right into it. I've seen horses that you would never have thought would have backed up or went off. Not going in that crowd, and it would there that close. I don't know why, but right. huh. it was like a little elevated deal where you walk down that catwalk at the grandstands. It might just hit your horse right the right yeah, height, I, and they did have some bright lights on the on the on that side of the grandstands too. I, it was, but it it was. I you big old crowd there yeah, too. Always big. Uh, yeah. That was fast there. Yeah. You know, I, I was open there one time, and you were there, and it came the dangest sandstorm I'd ever seen at a roping. They didn't stop the roping there. <laughs> no. So that, I, lived, I lived up there in Lovington for about 20 years, 19. Uh, Paul Tierney come out there to the get ready for the time event. He was going to ride uh, my black horse, which was green. I had a gray horse, and uh, I was going to ride his calf horse. So he come out there two or three days to rope, and I had a black felt hat roping. And anyway, we got done, and uh, he'd been out there a day or two. He came in, and he said, I don't know how you do it. I said, do what? He said, how can you rope in that big black hat out here in this wind? <laughs> I said, well, just, that's what I, yeah. I did. I mean, 
it, but that wind will howl out there. I guess it does everywhere, but it seems definitely like there. Out there, it seems like it's all the time. You know, guy, it never seemed like you uh, took a very big chance with your long rope. Seems like you, uh, most of the time, and you correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't know, because I'm, I'm not you, by, obviously, but it looks like it looked like just growing up and watching you pretty well my whole life, you tried to run to the same place every time. Is that right or wrong? It's, it's, you're right. I, uh, we, I mean, I never learned to really throw very far. And uh, it was always to run cloaks, and uh, that's what what I did. I mean, I, I run cloaks and and rope, but I just I mean, it seemed like to to rope steers and to trip them, you had to be there anyway. You had to catch them to to leave out. There was if you reached, usually your trip would come up, and uh, they wouldn't go down. So usually you had to catch you know catch up. So that's what I did. Learned to. Just run close and and set it up from there. Did you ever have any bad wrecks getting in close? Like you know, that? I've had a horse fall with me. Uh, I'd won it uh, down at Laredo. They had a steer open down there back several years ago. I don't know. That's where I filled my permit, Jimbo. Yep. Was it left Laredo? <laughs> Best they just time had it life. one time, didn't they? They had it uh, two or three times. Did they? Yes, sir. I can't remember. And then I. I roped one at, at uh, Odessa and uh, had a slow steer. And when I trip, I don't know my black horse, not the not the good one I had. I had another one got his back leg over, it and he just fell, laid down. He didn't kick, fight. He just laid down. And anyway, that's that's the only two really I can remember. I saw him one time, Odessa, Texas. Horse went down right in the middle of the arena with him. That was the black, black one at that rope. Okay. Under, under his back leg. That's one he just got done saying. Yeah. That's Shows you how much I'm paying attention yeah. to. <laughs> I was going to say, he had two Well, I was just thinking about it, and I was thinking, you know, it was a real strange deal because he was such a dominant roper, and everything just went still when that horse went down with him, Jim Bowen. And, and, and nobody went running out right off the bat. Until it all started coming un unraveled, and we seen guy was okay, but uh, it's just something you didn't see very often because right. you didn't see him take very many chances very often with his long rope like that. Yeah. I mean, it's just a, <laughs> definitely a fluke deal. Yeah, and I I do remember that happening. Yeah, it was at Odessa. Talk yeah. about a cold place to rope. Holy yeah. moly! Yeah, that was that wasn't a that wasn't a fun place. It was they had it at Andrews before, and it was like the fence was. About icicles just about that big, or, or around the fence. You know, mm -hmm. you couldn't see through the, the fence, fence to watch the rope, and it, it was that always cold. First time I went, they had it outside, Jimbo, outside the middle of January. <laughs> First you know, Odessa. I kid you not. And uh, the ground was frozen. It was snowing, and all they did was wave the hat rule and the dress code rule. <laughs> And everyone was roping in their, uh, I don't know, Elmer Fudd hats and, <laughs> and Carhartt overalls. Yeah, That's yeah. tough country out there anyway, old guys. Ooh, you got to yeah. be tough to rope out there in January outside. Or in their building they have right there for the steer ropers exactly, yeah. in January. Because I'm not sure if it wasn't colder after it. Because they didn't put any sides on it, Jimbo. They just put mm -hmm. a cover over it. Yeah. They backed the 18-wheeler up behind the box one year. To block the wind. Block the wind. Yeah. It was... Yeah, it was miserable. My dad ran the shoot at the first national final, and it was cold like that at, at Clayton, New Mexico. Yeah, I bet it was. And uh, he said they built a fire in the in the header's box. Oh yeah, you know, <laughs> it was a cold sucker. Yeah. Growing up in Kansas, we built the fire in the header's box a lot. <laughs> growing up, <laughs> I don't know how long were your practice sessions every day, guy? Uh, Ten hours, twelve yeah. hours. <laughs> could, could we could go way up in the night, yeah. Yeah. especially in the summers. We didn't do much in the day because it's hot, but we'd turn on the lights and we'd rope. A lot of time, it'd be coming daylight sometime when we'd when we'd finally quit. But you know, we we'd start you know seven eight o'clock and go to one or two nearly all the time. I mean, that's every day. Thing. Yeah, pretty much every day. Yeah, but and I imagine it's pretty serious business in the practice pen. Yeah, I mean. We we didn't talk a lot, really. We just 
when when rope when rope you know we me and Gip, of course we wanted to go eat and mom had it ready you know and <laughs> daddy was like no we're gonna yeah. stay out here and rope <laughs> and uh you know we we wanted to go in and eat and come back and rope but he wanted to finish so can't rope good on a full stomach <laughs> i guess not <laughs> but we that's what we did we we would we'd rope you know it, it was like that all the time did you lay a steer down every night or no, we didn't never lay one down every night. I yeah. mean, for just to time. Well, I mean, just to practice time. No, not no. practice time. Yeah. We didn't we? We would every once in a while. Usually, first of the year when rodeo started, we'd get one down mm-hmm. and uh, tie, and then of course when you'd go and stay with somebody, you'd, yeah, you'd tie with them or uh, before the finals, mm-hmm. you know, practice laying one down and probably right and doing right. it. But usually at the beginning of the year, kind of. Getting getting back into it. I figured the way he, the way he tied that they tied one every day, you know, <laughs> all the time. Did you guys ever get to matching tying? Yeah. Oh, I mean, with them at the school, they'd want to match a little bit, you know. But we wanted them to do more of it right, you know. That's you know, we didn't care how fast they were, you know, because the mistakes is what beat you, you know. And that and that is and it goes to that for today. I mean, you know it. The mistakes are going to beat you, you know. You're not going to beat them in, with the string, but the mistakes are going to kill you, you know. That's exactly. Remember Mike McLaughlin? We had him in the other day. Cody asked him, who's the fastest guy at time one you ever seen? He named two or three guys, but he said, that's not what it's important. He said, that tie won't win for you. He said, it'll lose for you. It'll lose it he said, your it'll money's lose. made from the when you leave that stirrup to when you string right. his first, his that's, top leg, you know. That's the way it was in the stirrup yeah. with me. From the, from the horse to get them strung, yeah. you know. Yep. Yeah. And not making the mistakes. Right, right. You know, I've seen a lot of, a lot of guys make a mistake. You know, Clark McIntyre, he was, you know, he was yeah. one of the best that, you know, just didn't make mistakes. Time, and you're not going to yeah. beat somebody two tenths of a second time mm-hmm. running down there. Right, right. But if you mess up, they're going to beat you two tenths. And if you're seconds. trying to hurry too much, you're going to mess up. <laughs> How many times have you heard, slow down and be fast yeah. Yeah. growing up? Yeah. I don't know. I heard it about a million yeah. times. <laughs> hey, you told me that one time, guy. <laughs> To slow down and be fast. Jim used to say you'll tie a lot more cattle trying to take your time than you ever will trying to be fast. Right. You yeah. know, you know, I I tied with Pake McIntyre a couple times just because we lived down there near him, and he would play a game called uh, no stall, and you couldn't beat him, which was you just didn't want any loss of motion at all in your tying, no matter how fast you were, and, and he was the mm-hmm. king at that, yeah. for yeah. sure. He's the only guy I've ever played that that way with. But uh, it, Pake was. Pake was real good. You know, his dad, they said, you know, of course, I didn't get to see Clark rope a lot when mm-hmm. I was doing, mm-hmm. you know, he's about, about. Yeah, done. way past his prime, man. And, uh, but I got a few. Sure. But sure. my dad, you know, he told me he was, you know, probably the best there was on the ground. And, and yeah. Pake was too. Pake, yeah. Pake didn't make many mistakes. I don't know how with that string he had. I have no <laughs> idea how he didn't make a mistake. I mean, I couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't have pulled it down my belt, I don't think. My dad told me that Clark, <laughs> if he needed to be 18 to beat you, He'd be seventeen six. Mm-hmm. You know, he just yeah. always just barely beat you. You know, he did just enough to beat you. Yeah, yeah. I played pool with a Mexican guy like that, Jimbo, one yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> just beat you one ball. Huh? <laughs> Every time, he would just get enough to beat me, no yeah, matter right. what. Right. <laughs> Down there in Monahans <laughs> is where it was. Well, I'm not even kidding you. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, that was a setup, wasn't it? I hate to get off the subject, but I was telling Jimbo about. That Mona, that deal Vance Vest had in Monahans and mm-hmm. used to have before uh, Pegas, Pegas, Pegas and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Well, that was some good ropings back yeah, in the was. day, it seemed like. Yeah. The ground was a little deep, you know, it was just that blow sand out there. Mm-hmm. And, and it was always, you know, of course, you could rope it on a range, you know, but mm-hmm. it, it wasn't slick or nothing. It just seemed mm-hmm. like it was a little deeper, you know. But it was, it was a nice arena and good setup. What's the best horse you guys ever had? I got a pretty good idea. I know the legends. <laughs> we, we've had several. Had several, yeah. But uh, the black one, you know, I had Jeremiah called him. He he was, you know, to me, was my best. Uh, I won more on him, but he lasted longer than a lot of them. And it, uh, I don't know. I rode him probably 11, 12 years, I imagine. Where'd he come from? I bought him from uh, Frank Johnson uh, from Pampa. 
is where I bought him, and there was a guy, and who was that horse trader in uh, uh, Shamrock? The yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you want to yeah. ask me? I can't say it, but uh, anyway, he I guess had found him, and Frank bought him from him, and uh, he was. Probably my best, you know, that I rode. I, I remember Gip, he was going to be a fireman. <laughs> and uh, we were, he said, you know, hold my steer back. Hey, and back then, you know, you could hold your steer back. And uh, I was traveling with uh, Cody Goodwin, uh, Cody O. Uh, Colby. Colby. Colby Goodwin. I mean, Colby, anyway. Yeah. Anyway, we was sitting up there in the stand, and I held his steer back. Because you could do it back then, you know, because he said, I got to go to this class. So I, we got done. I had my horse tied there. And, and Shorty Gordon took Gibbs down there for him. Cause he's uh-huh. going to be running late. But anyway, me and Kobe sitting in the stands. With, nah, I guess Gibbs didn't make it. Uh-huh. And I looked up uh-huh. and he said, oh, there's, there's Jeremiah. Oh, there's Gibbs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I showed up. It showed up. There's three ropers left. One right, right before me, and then uh, I got in there and I walked up and I was looking for my horse. He wasn't nowhere around, and uh, T was sitting on the fence over by the boxes there at Guthrie there to Lazy. And I said, "Have you seen my horse?" He goes, "No, but guys, horse is right there." I said, "Good enough." <laughs> <laughs> so I just got on hip, went out there, and I broke the barrier yeah. to win the round. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we rode. A lot of a lot of good ones, you know. Daddy always said, you know, my granddad come on a bet, you know, I could beat Gil. And Daddy said, you can't either. He said he can too. So they were going to match, and he'd put Gip on a good one, and and put me on a colt or something like that, or not, a, you know. So it wasn't that good. Oh no, Granddad! Oh no, not like that. <laughs> so, I mean, that's the only way I could beat him. That ain't that's wrong. He out, he was outrunning me one time to to a football or a basketball. That's we had to do something. He's outrunning me, and he's gonna get that ball first. But I pushed him and broke his arm, so I got the ball. <laughs> so anyway, we we had a few. We we got along good, and we wrote a lot, a lot together, and yeah. went to school together and uh, travel together lived in, together i mean just like we were well, we were brothers you know yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> almost yeah. like your brothers yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. he but never we, could make okie out of you though huh? no I've, I've come up here well, a few yeah. times to live. he was okay for a little while yeah but i never never stayed yeah i never did cheer for the ou oh, boy. <laughs> but no i probably would I'm, they're they're a good team. They, I'm a Texas boy. You yeah, know. I understand. But well, now well, that you're an Oki, get winning the Ben Johnson. What's it like to win your hometown roping like that? Oh, it's pretty cool. You know, it's always a different setup. You know, they score them out there, kind of like Cheyenne. You know, they scored them a long ways, big pin, and uh, you just had to go up and rope them and tie them down. And uh, that's what I tried to do pretty much when just go get. All of them full forehead, I think, you know, go get forehead tied down. And then if the right steer come along, you know, I'd try to place it around on him. But it's was, it was cool to win your own hometown rodeo. We got a picture of you in here. And you're, yeah. Ben Johnson's actually. Uh, yeah, he presented the saddle that year. He's presenting the saddle to you yeah. that year. Well, well that, that had to be a good feeling. That, that's something, isn't it? You know, I won a lot, but. I never got my picture with Ben Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's something. Then he went down there to to that rope in McAllister's. Or not. Yeah. Uh, but the he, McIntyre rope. Anyway, he won yeah. that nice buckle. Sat in a trailer. Yeah. Everything. And, yeah, he, he went. That's a little bit three. of a different roping. Yeah, it yeah. was. Tell, yeah. T- tell, tell everybody about the, uh, the way they ran that roping down there. Because... There's never been a roping like it Choc- since, really. Choctaw rules. Choctaw, Choctaw rules. rules, yeah. Yeah, no barrier. And you just had the line out there. You could rope them anywhere, but you couldn't. they couldn't hit before that line, you know. Mm-hmm. If they hit before that line, what was I think they put 10, 10 plus on 10 on you. And then you didn't have to. You didn't have to stay tied six seconds. seconds. Yeah. You just had to put. make sure you put you two put reps a in a hoodie on them. Yeah, you had to put two, two reps. reps in a hoodie on them. No. 
the no. very first one he had, Jimbo, it started off, they drew it two names out of every out of the hat. And it started off tournament style. And uh, the only reason I know that is because my dad drew Guy Allen the first year. So I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God, here we go. Couldn't have drew a worst one. Guy took him took him to the house on the deal. And the next few years when they had it, I think they you roped two steers, and then they went back to tournament style, uh, slowest to fastest, you know, the top 12 or top 16 mm -hmm. or something. It was really a neat, interesting yeah, uh, rope in the way they ran it. Where'd they have that at? Kiowa. Kiowa. I mean, uh, whose arena? Is it, is it is in town. Place? Okay. okay. It's a town arena. In was that yeah. the John McIntyre yeah. rope? Yeah, yeah, yeah the John, John McIntyre, McIntyre yeah. rope. Because Clark had a big rope arena, but he, it was several acres, but it had a tree right out in the middle of it. Oh, really? no. Yeah. Never, never went there. Cause, yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, that was it. Was different, you know. Yeah. You had to beat. I remember uh, Brady Garton, and Shorty Boy. Yeah. Roping in it when he was sixteen, I think. Young old kid. Yeah. I remember him roping in it. He made it a long ways through there, yeah, beating a lot of the top guys, you know, because yeah. you know, in a two-head match, anything can happen, especially with the the Choctaw rule, the rules right. they had going on there. It was anybody's ball game. There was yeah, a Gip won it. Yeah. yeah. Anybody's game. <laughs> anybody's game. I still see him pulling that trailer around town every now and then. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Guy, Cheyenne, best I remember, and like I said, I don't remember stuff very good. Was that rodeo not very good to you for a long time, and then when it decided to be good to you, it was better than you could ever imagine? I'm not mm. sure. Was that, well, was, that, was that the way it kind of went? You know, when well, the first year I went, we wrote, they roped steers that had been roped. I came and had it, and uh, I placed the first year I went. I went like seventh maybe or something in the average. And then they went back to, you know, all the ropers were upset about not roping fresh steers at Cheyenne. So anyway, they had fresh steers, and it seemed like I never could get nothing done. And uh, I placed in some rounds. I won some, some rounds, but... And I ended up 16th in that, I don't know how many, I know three years in a row. And uh, anyway, the hunter tangent, which was 96, I believe, and I won it. And uh, I come back, uh, went in first two, I think two other times. I roped one around the neck and one got up. But uh, yeah, it was it was a tough one for me. It, it was. It, I don't know why, you know, Pake, uh, there at the OS ranch rope in there at Post, they scored them 30 foot, rope press steers, and uh, I I won it, I believe, four times. You took the traveling trophy. So, I mean, it wasn't that, I don't know if it was just not enough left. You know, the OS had a lot of room to go left. So I, I really don't know. I, I, I missed some good ones. And caught some bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> when he finally won it, Jimbo, I think he won two out of three rounds and probably placed in that other one pretty deep. Right. Twenty plus thousand dollars. One of the yeah. first times that anyone's ever seen anything like that, especially in the steer roping. Might have been a record for a single money one and one event at a rodeo at that time. I'm not sure, but dang near could have been. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good one. Pay, uh, Pendleton. I really, I really like Pendleton. Mm -hmm. Pendleton was. Was good. I took Gip up there. I guess one of the last years he made the finals. And needed to win, and of course we traveled together up there. And, mm -hmm. and uh, anyway, we won enough to get to the finals. I know, so it was it was pretty neat. But I always liked Pendleton. You I like Cheyenne. I just you got along on the grass good up there. Good, yeah. yeah. I took a, a different kind of horse mm -hmm. most of the time. One that kind of was more on his front end and on his back. Mm -hmm. Other the grass, mm -hmm. but uh, that alone, I won. I won it four times, placed in it several. But yeah, I know I I roped one around the neck there to win it. Mike Thompson, I was riding. Me and him went up there together, and uh, I was in the lead. And he was winning second again, and I roped mine around the neck. And I had to bring his truck, his horns, and the saddle, and everything back <laughs> in the truck. So <laughs> anyway, it was it was all right. We I. But no, it, it was, that was a good one. I liked it. Mm -hmm. Sheridan is where I I filled my permit at Sheridan uh, in 76. And uh, 
course, they took your money away when you be filling your permit, and then you started over, and then there wasn't much left after Sheridan. You know, there was Cheyenne. I was too late to enter Cheyenne because Sheridan, the book closed at Cheyenne before. Not to say that I was going to win anything at Cheyenne, but you know, I, I didn't get the rope at Cheyenne. Mm -hmm. and, but I just missed the final just a little. Just. What was your thinking of taking the money away? What What was the thought process it's, behind that? Because you have a, a permit, and you win – because you can fill your permit, mm -hmm. and you used to, you couldn't go anymore after you filled it. You had to buy your card mm -hmm. or wait till the next year and get you another permit and do it again. So they took all that money away. And now yeah. I think you can rodeo a whole year on your permit. Mm -hmm. I think they give like a champion permit holder yeah. award now. Yeah, yeah. But I don't understand because year. you want it fair and square again, you know, the same competition. I, I don't understand. Well, you're not a problem. member yet. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah. Yeah. You have to prove you're worthy to be a member, and then once I you see. do that, you start fresh with a membership. So mm -hmm. you uh, the first year, right. so you can go for rookie of the year, Jimbo. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. okay. Back then, they just only had one rookie. They didn't mm -hmm. have rookie in each event. Oh yeah. When I was on, they just had one. So, where do you guys see steer roping going now? You know, I. I don't know, really. Uh, I heard, I don't know if it's just hearsay, that they were going to add more money at the final. Mm -hmm. I, I did hear yeah, that. I did hear that. that. I've heard that. Uh, well, i seen, I think it was, no, uh, I think I thought I saw it posted with the PRCA, but it might have just been hearsay. But, uh, but didn't you hear they're not even going to have steer open at San Angelo? I heard that. Well, I, I've heard that, and I heard at Lovington they weren't going to have it in the rodeo. And, and uh you know, I, I I don't know, but it's it, it's a hard event to mm -hmm. to, and if it's not done, you know, right. I don't know what's the right way to do it. Yeah. You know, I mean to show yeah. it. It's they, not a showcase event. You know. Yeah, and you know they they don't show it at the, do it at the performance at Cheyenne now. And then there's been a lot of griping, even what they did do in the short go. You know, there's a lot of griping about the yeah. you know, way I it came off. Haven't heard. I haven't. Yeah. I haven't really talked to. I don't really know much. I talked to. Scott Seneker every once yeah. in a while mm -hmm. and see how he's doing and Rocky Patterson yeah and, uh, I don't know y'all need to get Rocky in here yeah. he'd probably tell you a lot yeah but <laughs> anyway you might have to cut the mic off every once yeah. in a while I don't know he's <laughs> I totally think he's right there right behind Guy Allen is one of the best he's, ropers I've is, ever seen is. the guy can uh, he's the complete package without without the uh the, the 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 reach that these guys have mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. the the height mm -hmm. and arm mm -hmm. length you know it's pretty amazing that he's even competed against guy allen and snot scott snedeker because you know he has to take three steps to these guys two steps so that's really uh that's really saying something about rocky patterson there you know, rocky come to one of my schools that i had it uh, pan, uh steve Hormans down there at uh beaver Oakland yeah beaver he came to it, and I never got tired of somebody asking a question, but I did with him. <laughs> he asked question after question after question. I want to know who did it, why did they do it like this? And I'm like, finally, I said, Rocky, I don't know. I mean, you'd have to ask them. I can't answer them questions. But he did. He asked a lot of questions. Yeah. Well, what his boy is, the, the complete package. Yeah. Only only he's an athlete. Yeah, he is. And uh, can rope just as good as anybody, can tie just as good as anybody. It's just he's going to be hard to beat for a long time to come. I believe he will. Yeah. No doubt about it. I saw him at a sea rope in here a few years ago, and that's the only time I saw him rope between now and just a couple mm -hmm. of years ago, Jimbo, mm -hmm. since he's on top of his game. And that day I decided <laughs> this this guy's going to be a rough guy to deal with from yeah, now on yeah, in this steer roping event. He is. So. What yeah. about team roping? Did you ever try to make the finals team you know, roping I, guy? Uh, I remember you and Bucky Hefner used to enter a whole bunch of team yeah, ropes together. You know, we we used to go in the winter and go rope, just like me and Gip did. And and uh, but then when the steer roping started up, we you know that was our that's how we made a living or not made a living. We just that's what we we did to <laughs> to travel. <you> know? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we did that. Me and Gip, we went a lot team roping, but. And then I roped with Trey Johnson, and uh, me and him got 
we was close. We just needed to win, you know. And of course, uh, Reno. We went to Reno and and was hoping for you know a good Reno to keep going. And but the steer open started right after that. You know, there's Pecos, Sheridan, you know, Cheyenne, and you know, I'm like, you know, I, I had to pull up, you know, because mm-hmm. that was you know where I sure where I went and won, you know. Mm-hmm. And we kept going some, but. You know, we didn't go to the big ones. You know, it didn't. We didn't go to Salinas or mm-hmm. out, but we went. We kept going to some. You know, what we could. But, but mainly, I just stuck to roping steers. So, you know, could I have made the finals? I didn't. So I don't know. <laughs> I think he could have, Jimbo. <laughs> oh, if he'd have made it out there to Salinas, it'd have been a slam dunk. Yeah, <laughs> right. He had to pick between Cheyenne and roping steers and Salinas. Uh, had to go to the steer open to Cheyenne. Sure. Uh, for sure. Who's some of the traveling partners you guys have had over the years that some people might have heard of? You mentioned Colby Goodwin a while uh, ago. Colby was one. Bucky Hefner. Uh, of course, me and Gip went for I don't know how many years. Yeah. And uh, I think then Mac Altizer went with us. Mac Altizer. Well, Jim Bob's boy. He went with us. Uh, I went with Phil Lyon. He was... He was one of the best traveling partners I had. Hey, what was it the year? 9090? Was it 1990? You and Phil Line had Phil Line came out of retirement it seemed like or semi retirement from roping and uh, you uh, and him went head to head that year. Mm-hmm. We traveled together and he was in the lead and and he beat me like 98 bucks. Uh, I broke the barrier on the last one. I had to place in the round cuz I was out of the average and uh, I had to win at least fourth in the round it had to be 12 or 14 i don't know what it was anyway i think i had to be 14 or something i was 12 and broke the barrier and he beat me 98 bucks but uh that but he was a good good one to travel with he was he was good to my family you know we we really liked phil Lyon. he was good uh, one of the best cowboys to ever live. What what's oh, yeah. his stats, Jimbo? I forget. He's done well, some things that are just unbelievable. Well, he won the finals in in both bull riding and cat roping one same year. Same year. Yeah, same, same year. year. I mean, that, who's ever done that? I mean, a combination like that, bull riding and cat roping. Ace Berry. Of course. Well, Joe Green made the. I think he didn't win the final, but he made the finals in bull riding and steer roping. Yeah. You know. But yeah, Ace Berry actually won. Same year as Phil, right? Yeah, the same year. How fluky is that? He won the bareback riding and the team roping average at the finals. Yeah. The same year that Phil Lyon won the bull oh, really? ride and the cab rope. Doesn't that, that sound weird just that talking does, about yeah. it? That Can you imagine uh, uh, Sage Kimsey winning the calf roping today? <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I or, traveled the last few years with Shannon Stalls, Will Yoakum. Uh, Will, he kind of was my driver, and uh, he took care of me and my horses. And, and I was team roping mm-hmm. with Trey a bunch, and he kind of took care of the tripping rig. And But uh, me and Shannon, we went a bunch. We had we were picking up together, and we mm-hmm. had a lot of fun. Shannon, he was he was one of one of the best ones I traveled with. Mm-hmm. Really, we really got along real good. Yeah. And, uh, you did become a pickup man for a while, I, a rodeo I pickup man. What uh, for quite a while? Yeah, about what, six years. What all is uh, what's all entailed in the rodeo pickup man job from the time he leaves the house to head to the rodeo guy? <laughs> well, you got to load your truck with six about six horses at least, and and uh, you get there and you got to make sure the arena is set up uh, where you could run the bucket sock to tying events. Uh, you start feeding, and you feed all the buckets, like all the tiny bit stuff, and then uh, not much time to really lay down and take a nap, and then you got to do it again for the rodeo that night. And then when slack was after the rodeo, then you stayed till it was over, and then you fed after that, and then you laid down. It it, it was a lot to picking up, more than people really realize. You know? Yeah, you guys work a lot. For they sure, do, the pickup man. You know, they. I don't know how they. They do it, but they. It, it is. It's. It's a lot of work. A lot of hours. Did uh, 
you ever make any of them bronc riders mad by dropping them on accident? You know, I don't remember which one it was, but it was just San Angelo. I went to pick him up, and uh, I reached to get the hack ring, and the bronc stopped. I had to hope that hack, that hack ring. I jerked it out of that boy's hand, and he was sitting up there just, uh, just with the saddle, and no rain. And, anyway, bucked him off, hurt him. I don't remember who it was, but I, I hated that. That was... But I never run over anybody, and uh, I didn't fall off. That was that was one of the deals yeah. Shannon told me not to fall off. So yeah. I never fell off picking up. I'd say that. Is I'll, there a lot of difference picking up bareback and saddle bronc? Yeah, there's. It's a difference. I mean, bareback horses can run a lot, you know, a lot more, mm-hmm. and and of course the bronc, you know, a good bronc is easy when they're bucking. Mm-hmm. When you get up there and the guy, I mean, he just you sometimes never feel them even get off. Yeah, yeah. But bareback riding, you pretty much got to pull them off, you know. Yeah. It looks a lot wilder. Yeah. Yeah, it, you get to go on pretty fast. Yeah. Like at Pecos or Cheyenne. I never picked up at Cheyenne, but Pecos mm-hmm. was pretty fast. Some of them, you know, bucking horses, they when they know when that buzzer quits, you know, they yeah. still have a flank on, they're still going to run. Right, right. What about roping bulls as a pickup man? Did you ever get in any storms roping bulls, dragging them out? Never, never did. Uh, a lot of the stock contractors don't want you roping them, you know, especially the young bulls. And, but you, sometimes you have to, and then some didn't care. And some said if you if you rope them, be sure you own a horse that can pull them out. You know, don't want them hung up out there. So, you know, I I roped some and and. Got by all right, but no, I never did really get have a wreck of doing it. You know, I I would kind of I wanted to take care of the stock contractor, his animals, and, and so I, you know, some of the other guys that, you know, like Paul Peterson, and Shandon, and Billy Ward, you know, they they knew them stock contractors. They knew what button to push and what not, and they do a little bit more. But I just kind of hung back a little bit. So followed their lead. Yeah. A little bit, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Get these guys d- done everything in the rodeo business. Guy pickup man, eighteen time world champion. Get you know what he's doing now, Jimbo. Well, he, he just retired as a fireman. I know. Yeah. Our chief. He's actually one of the biggest rodeo judges in the business. Now. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh yeah, I knew he, that. Gets, he gets to yeah. he gets to decide who wins the uh, quite a few of the national championships in our in our great country here. What's your schedule been like? Been busy. This been year. Busy. Where all have you been, Gip? Oh, uh, I've been to Texas quite a bit and Perry, Georgia and uh Wyoming and South Dakota and back to Texas and here in Oklahoma and fixing to be one and over in Arkansas. And then back to Texas again and So you're doing what all associations are you doing now? Mainly the uh, PRCA and uh, high school and junior high quite a bit. And there's a few of the IPRA, ACRA, but more of the pro rodeos now. Since I retired, I can go a little further away from home. He sleeps a little bit longer. Mm. He can find his phone. <laughs> he, he took that retirement pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. You can get used to it. I tell you, I've been retired about a year now. and It's, it's pretty good getting. What do you good. look for in a... Good bucking horse ride or a good bull ride, because I don't know. No, you, you can know. tell a good bucking horse ride, but yeah. there's some of these other ones I I can't tell. Well, you know, you got the criteria. You got to go by, and if it's the good good ones, it'll it'll jump out and say, "There he is." You know, he's bucking, and that rider's making all the criteria, spurring, and all that what he's supposed to. And you know, the ones what are hardest for me is kind of when they they don't buck as hard, and then the riders, you know, will. Uh, I think a good bucking horse will help a rider. You know, them good riders, they'll really sit up there and ride them good. I mean, it's probably hard. Uh, I always rode the one just old horse bucking, and it wasn't no fun. <laughs> they make it look easy. They, they, make it look e- they make it look easy and everything, you know, but mainly just go by the criteria, what's in the rule book, you know. Did he spur him and control and timing and 
on the horse, how much drop and kick and and stuff. Ain't much you know. to it, is there? No. <laughs> did, did you have to go to take instructions or something as a yeah. kind of event guy to, to score, do the bucking stuff? Yeah, they have seminars for sure. us. Yeah. And yeah. I think uh, one year we had to go every year. Then it was kind of every other year. And there for a while, I'd go every year, mm-hmm. you know, just because I wanted to try to get better, you know, right, and, sure. and stuff, you know, learn other events a little bit more and stuff. And that's where I'd go. Mm-hmm. What about y'all's kids? Anybody following in the family footsteps of rodeoing we, or roping? We were lucky to have girls. girls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. Well, your girl guy, she used to outrope all us boys on the <laughs> dummy growing up. I can guarantee you that. She looked just like Guy, too. Yeah. She had the same exact moves. <laughs> yeah. now, you couldn't beat her tying those horns on the dummy. Uh, she, uh, she has a rope. She kind of wants to a little bit now, but I mean, she's 38. And uh, but uh, she's got a little boy and and uh, just got does her job. She works at a, a church there in, in Lovington that they started her and her mom and and then uh, my other daughter, middle daughter. She uh, she's got two little girls and uh, she never did rodeo any. She she was pretty much a just a, a mom and then the little one. She's uh, she ropes and runs barrels. Uh, but she she's doing really good in school, and she kind of wants to really do that. Really yeah, good, which is good. And mm. I want her to get out there and practice more and do stuff. But that's what I did. And look right. at me, you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my oldest one said she got the breakaway roping and uh, did it all through college. And but she wanted to get her schooling. She got finished with her eligibility and then just went back to her studies and got finished with her school. Youngest one, when she is uh, junior rodeos and what, she won the all-around trailer one year. But then next year she had to step up and she didn't think it was that much fun anymore and wanted to do other things, you know. She went to cheerleading and basketball and and everything so that was whatever she wanted to do was good you know shoot you you got a grandpa name what's your grandpa names mine papa ledge papa ledge yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm not grandpa yet. There yet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, i got two girls too here so I, yeah. i'm in the same boat as you yeah. guys holy yeah. moly yeah yeah That's guy uh, a month or two ago you were voted into the cowboy hall of fame down in oklahoma city yes sir what does that mean to you? Oh, it's 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 quite an honor, you know. Uh, I always wanted to be a cowboy, you know, and coming up here with my dad and my, you know, my mom, my brother, and, and we'd come up here to Benita and Paul Huska to the Ben Johnson, and you know we'd drive by there, you know, mm-hmm. and get to see that. Now you can't see the sign, you know, the trees pretty much, you know, on that Loop Forty Four mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. And used to, you know, you could see it, you know. Mm-hmm. Cowboy Hall of Fame, you know, and you're like, man, will I ever be good enough to be in there? And uh, quite an honor to oh, yeah. to be in, get inducted in it. Uh, it. You know, it took more than just me. You know, it took a whole family. Sure, sure. So, Cody and I were down there last fall for the induction ceremony, and they really take care of you. You'll really yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. Only bad thing, you, you got to get up and do a speech. Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> the hardest thing. It's, this year is a little easier for me. Right, right. Question. There won't be, but what, uh, seven, eight hundred people there yeah. and Cowboy Channel yeah. and all that. Jimbo but, uh, had to get up and speech and take it on uh, behalf of his grandpa. So, yeah. Yeah. I got you. I didn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard for me to get up there and speak because, I mean, it's. It's more than just me. It was yeah, there, sure, you know? sure. It was a family, you know, right. a brother. Yeah, I mean, your dad and your mom. Well, yeah. Yeah. That's a great honor. Well, there's no better life, really. I'm going to say there's probably a lot of sacrifices come along with being the best, but at the end of the day, there's really <laughs> there's really no better life than the rodeo life, uh, Yeah, in no. my opinion, anyway. It is. It's. I mean, I love love rodeo, and when you're out of it, and doing what I was doing and you sit over there and you think about all the steers you missed and all the ones you should have caught and <laughs> you know you're like will they ever get to do it again and you know will they ever rope again you know I, we, I mean my dad loved it 
You can ask Gip. I mean, he wrote way more than me and him. Yeah. Me and Gip, we, we wrote a lot. Yeah. But we, uh, you know, we can go out there and run a dozen steers, and we're pretty good now. But when he was, oh, before, what, three years ago, probably, he's still allowed to be out there running the hunters. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. it just, he run a bunch all his life. He he loved to rope. Yeah. And, uh, Anyway, if he could do it now, he'd He'd still be good. You know, he his old shoulders, yeah, not real good. He had broke his collarbone last well last year. Yeah, and uh, so anyway, he's had a little trouble with it, you know. And then we lost mom, and that that was a big, big hurt. So he just uh, he misses it. Yeah, he uh, he'll get on a horse and. I don't know. He'll sit it up one time, and he's good for the day. I mean, <laughs> he'll get off. I'll be like, I got to go get off. You doing? Maybe go to the restroom or yeah, something. Sure. Oh, but he just sits there. He'll me and Gip. We were kids. Would go to look for one steer, one cow, something, and ride all day long, just all day. You know, we'd be like. Man, let's go in. I mean, I mean, it's only we'll what, go find uh, him tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, he'll come in for sure, you know. And but he wasn't quitting until he found it, and he he's like that today. I mean, he there's no quit in him, and he's 86, and I mean, he's yeah. he's there's no quit. I mean, he's mm-hmm. he done a lot more than yeah. me. Or, I don't know, Gil. He does a lot. He told me about. <laughs> running up some stairs and five flights or whatever and I'm like I don't believe I could have done it (laughs) well he was president of our steer roping club and I was vice president and he helped me a lot and and your mom and the year I was a secretary wife she'd done the books before and she helped me that transformation she kept a lot of time yeah really nice lady we were going through some stuff just the other day when they called and Mm-hmm. Wanted some stuff or wanting some stuff, but I don't know, end of September, some pictures. And anyway, we're going through some stuff. My mom, my sisters, and mm-hmm. kind of got to me. And anyway, at times, my mom had wrote down, I was going to try to remember what finals it was, but it was, it was one in the 90s. I don't know, but I, don't, I think it was, I don't, I don't, I couldn't remember. I wanted to remember that, but. And one of the years I won the, won the average, but she kept time. They ain't no telling how many, yeah. you know. And she taught us a lot. You know, we were kids, and you probably your your dad, and mom, remember it when, you know, you go to Cheyenne, you got a free, you know, got a ticket, you know. But a lot of times they wouldn't give four, you know, for mm-hmm. four kids, you know, and have to go around and try to find it. And my mom, she would be like, you know, just follow me. And don't look back. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So we go in the gate, just don't look back. Right. Keep so walking. They, they said, she said, if they want us, they'll come get us. Yeah. So anyway, that's how I learned it. And uh, I tell everybody that, that yeah. my mom taught me that if they want you, they'll come get you. Yeah. Yeah. She is up there in the stand. They tell a story up there in, at Cheyenne, and they were uh, all the women, the mothers, or, you know, uh, or wives, I mean, was up there in the stands. And anyway, they're having the rodeo, and I guess they sold some of them seats at the Roper's Wild City, and you know, and they come in there and said uh, uh, they paid for them seats. My mom said, "Yeah, we sure did." <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, she was she was pretty quiet, but she stood yeah. for what she believed. Yeah. I bet she'd sure be proud of you going in Oklahoma City. Oh, yeah. She she was uh, proud of her boys, you know. Is your she dad going to go down there to I'm the sure induction? Yeah. I'm sure he will. Did you guys go with your dad the other day to... Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. He was there. Was they there. put him in uh, the, the Texas Cowboy Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, we were there. We were made and uh, he'd give with our two sisters. You think we, he'd already been in it somehow? <laughs> yeah, you'd think that he would, but yeah, they... But yeah, he got in it, and uh, we all all went in about what three tables, I guess. Yeah, that were 
people, his fr friends that live around there. The, and, uh, of course, you know, his family and our, our wives and uh, Gibbs kids came. But there, I guess Becky, our sister, she had mm -hmm. two that came. Came, yeah. But mine didn't come and older sisters didn't come. So. But that was that was good, and he was he was very very happy. He he strapped that buckle on, and he wears it today. I mean, he, <laughs> he's proud of it. Yeah, everybody was glad for him for sure. Yeah. There's no doubt about. Just like you, guy. I, I don't know anybody that's not glad for you. We're all uh, so so darn proud of you, and it's just so well deserving, and it's just a, such a long time coming. It but is. I guess they had to make sure you were officially almost retired anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he could probably still pop out and take his take his right to town anytime he wanted, Jimbo. Yep. Holy moly. Well, Jimbo, you got anything else for Guy? And Gip. And Gip. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, well, just thank them for coming in. We really appreciate it. And, and you know, we have a lot of wannabe steer ropers watch this. You know, and and I, I bet they take a lot from what. You guys talked about today and your horse training and the way you approached everything, and I think it'll really be a, a good. Well, it, it was quite an honor for for me to to be up here. I mean, Paul Husky is, a, you know, they say the steer open capital yeah. of the world, yeah. you know, and and it, it was. I guess it's moved from New Mexico to here to wherever, but yeah. you know, there was a lot of steer ropers, and when we were kids, you know, we came to the Ben Johnson with her dad and and it's Father's Day, and yeah. and we ate. Fried chicken with T Woman's uh, family, and you know we we had a, a big time, you know. Yep. And, and of course, you know Gibbs has been here more here than he was in Texas, you know. Right. I yeah. still call him Texas, but <laughs> yeah. But uh, he he says that oh, you can beat Texas, and yeah. Well, they've been doing they it pretty regular. <laughs> they, they, yeah. And they can. <laughs> Uh, what kind of advice would you have for a young steer roper, you two guys? Someone just wanting to get into the sport. Do they need to find a mentor to talk to, or do they just need to uh, go to a roping school? What what needs to happen? Well, I would say, I mean, if they could, if you could find a school, you know, to get to go to, you know, your dad put on several. Uh, if somebody had, had roped, but you know, to, for a guy wanting to to do it, you know, it it's it's costly. You know, it, it's, a, it's a costly because when I started going, they were driving Rose Royces and had inline trailers. Mm -hmm. You know, and the Rose Royce back then was kind of a top deal. But I mean, me and Gip, we had a stock trailer, and a one seater pickup. You know, that's <laughs> what we went in. Right. But uh, you know, it's an expensive event. Sure. And rodeo's hard. I mean, it, it's 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 a tough way to make a living, but it's a great it's a great. I would have traded it for. Nothing. I mean, it was. I had a had a great time, but but yeah, just a lot of work to mm -hmm. to go and you know practice. You know, and you know, perfect practice. You know, makes perfect. And I guess you know you practice a lot. We roped a lot. We practiced a lot. You know, my dad he told us when we were kids. You know, if the house is on fire, we'll put it out, keep her open, and that's <laughs> kind of the way we we did. I mean, we oh. roped and uh, we roped a lot. We stayed up, and uh, just we, we practiced a lot. Yep. And it takes a lot. It takes a lot of practice. And I mean, it. And it, even today's time, you know, with the the kids that's going or are not kids, but the mm -hmm. men that's roping now, and I mean, it's tough. Kept roping, team roping, steer roping. I mean, you breakaway roping. For our girls, can you, you know. imagine trying to make a living team roping right now oh, against ooh. them boys? Holy moly, there's so many. Oh. There's 12 year olds that can rope just as good as the guys going down the yep. national finals. Yep, I know they they had them 40 plus ropings, and you know, all they cut out is the kid. You know, I mean, they're, just, <laughs> they're just just tough, you know, they're not cutting out nobody. I mean, it's but it, it's it's a great it was to me, I, I would have traded it for nothing. I met a lot of people. A lot of committee people uh, through the years that I'm still friends with, you know, today, and and uh, you know, I took my families with me some, and, and uh, but it's hard, it's hard on the family sure. that uh, mm -hmm. you can go and, and the rodeo. I mean, it's you know, driving all night and and roping and 
it, it's it's hard, yeah. it's, and it's no better life. You know. Do you ever think steer horses would be costing hundred thousand dollars plus? No, I, I wouldn't no. tell any horse would, but yeah. but they made a lot of me. You know, I mean it's, but you know it takes a good horse to win. Yep. You know, it takes a, a good horse. You know, they, you're not going to beat them. You know, they. My dad, he'd say, "We well, all can beat them on the donkey." No, we can't. Uh-huh. We had, we had a horse. You know, we had to have a horse, and we had some good ones. Gip, Gip rode some good ones, and, and uh, it was. I was thankful that that horse fell with him, broke his foot that year, because it would have been tough. I mean, you know, <laughs> but I, I had him one leg. It just kind of like I pushed him when I got that ball. Yeah, I mean, one arm. So. <laughs> It was, but well, we rode we rode good horses. Yeah. We roped a lot, practiced a lot. And we had a good time, and uh, great friends. You know, they even know he's a brother. You know, yeah. <laughs> so I talk to him pretty much every day. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, Jimbo, you gonna ask him? Oh yeah, I need to ask him. We always do a Mount Rush for. Of stoop, whoever we're talking to, it's cab rope or steer rope. But we'll ask you if you're building a Mount Rushmore of steer ropers. I only need three names. Normally we need four names, but since you're here, we're gonna go ahead and put you up there. Now, you're too modest to do it yourself, so we're gonna do it. But we need three other names as the greatest steer ropers of all time. Not necessarily one one of the most gold buckles. You're, you could use different criteria, the influence they had on the sport, you know, who they helped, or or just whatever. But in your mind, was steer ropers or just ropers? Yeah, just steer, let's say steer ropers. Steer ropers. Well, uh, to me, one of course would be my idol was Sonny Davis. You know, uh, would be would be one. I mean, how can you place them? You know, it's Robert hard. Thompson. You know, Lewis Kincaid. How about Sean Burchett? And John Burchett, Burchett, Walter you know, Arnold, <laughs> Walter, Arnold and Young, yeah. Arnold and Young, Arnold Phelps. I always throw Bob Crosby in there. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're Charlie Lee and Kelly yeah. Corbin. Yeah, and Shot Webster and Everett Shaw. I mean, you, it's hard to leave guys like that, that off. You know, so it's it's hard to do. You know, with with me when I was just thinking, you know, about when you were saying that, you know, I thought Arnold Phelps was one of the best. Guys with a the rope, they JD Yates. I mean, was phenomenal. I told you, Jimbo. Yeah, I yeah. say JD Yates yeah, is one of the best on pure ropers, ropers with a rope. Period. Of anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's Bobby. another one of my top five. I mean, them them three guys. When I was going, I mean, there's T Woman, Jake Barnes, mm-hmm. but them three guys to me, you'd say go catch it, and who would you want? Mm-hmm. And you'd send them. I'd, mm-hmm. I'd say send them. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's. To me, now steer ropers. You said you know. I mean, you go with the, the ones that had, you know, did the championships make it? No, I don't. I don't think. I mean, it's some people's don't go as much, you know. But uh, then you throw the horses in there that that were trained, you know, like your dad sold lots of great horses, you know, that that my mouth watered, but I couldn't afford them, mm-hmm. you know. And so. Uh, well, I don't know, Gil. You know, you put in yeah. Delphi Thompson. You know, I mean, they're just so, so we're not so many growing up. Right. Now today, you know, you you leave out Rocky Patterson. You know, he hadn't even uh, said Trevor. And then we done Trevor, we, yeah. we yeah. done Trevor, left him Trevor. to the side. Yeah. Yeah. So, Trevor. So you know, so you'd have to put Trevor mm-hmm. up there. I would say, yeah. you know. Okay. And, so we got Guy Allen, Trevor. Ah. Uh, and a whole bunch of others. And a whole yeah. bunch of others. Oh, it's hard. It's hard to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah. You can usually come up Rocky with one Patterson, or two pretty easy. You know. no. Yeah. But it's hard to pick that third or fourth one because you have to leave off so many great ones, you know. No. Uh, it's that would be be hard to, to say. Well, guys. Gip. <laughs> we finally got Gip in here. We've right. only been trying to get you in here for a little over almost two years now, Gip. Yeah, I just got to sit back and listen to God <laughs> answer every now and then. <laughs> oh, shoot. Well, we appreciate you guys coming. Thank hey. you, guy. You bet. I uh, appreciate y'all coming so much. I was here. Enjoyed it. Yeah. What are you doing driving through Pahuska, guy? We're headed to, my wife's family was in South Dakota. 
and we're going up there uh, to the Sturgis Bike Rally. Is that where you're headed? <laughs> yeah. No, we're going up. <laughs> we're going up there to hog roast. They have a hog roast up there, and we're going up there to hang out for three or four days. And uh, so, you teaching any roping schools now? I haven't been. No, no, I haven't. I've I've been roping, team roping a little bit. I haven't really got the urge to rope steers. And, I don't know that I want to put in that much work. <laughs> it know? is a lot of work to stay on it, isn't it, sometimes? It is. It is. And uh, so, but I've been team roping some. And uh, Do you even enjoy that, though? I do, practicing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's all fun until you go to a team roping, yeah, really. There you go. And then, there you go. Then you're like, And they're like, oh, I know I why I quit team roping now. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, me, anyway. <laughs> yeah. But it's uh, been doing that. It's been fun. It has. Gibbs come down a couple of times, and we've got to rope a little bit. And uh, we don't rope till dark. I know that we quit a little early. You know, <laughs> we go in and eat. So anyway, it uh, it's been been fun to rope a little bit. You know, so I've been trying to get a horse of his for a while, but he won't turn loose of him. And uh, he's uh, still training some steer yeah, roping horses. Every yeah. time I he trains one, they uh, they take and start hauling and win a bunch of money. Uh, he was he was good with them. He he trained. A lot of good ones, and I was more. Of, I got to go, uh, you know. Got to get ready, and Gip was like, "We'll just slow down a little bit," and and he he had some good ones, but I would I was too fast. I, I had too much going on. <laughs> so. What made you slow down, Gip? Uh, I just, remember you went to every steer open, and then all of a sudden you didn't go to you know, any of them but the Ben Johnson here in town, really. Just family, you know, got my family going and then just stayed at home and then I got the job here. This Pahaska will do it to yeah. you, won't it? Got on fire department here from went 24 years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. community here. Yeah. 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 I moved here. I was roping, hauling steers for my dad. And within five years, I ain't run a steer, you know, yep. in five or six years. This place will do it to you. It's a good place to for a steer roper to come. <laughs> Quit roping steers, it seems like. Yeah. But anyway. Well, guys, thank you all so much for joining us, and uh, we'll see everybody else next week. This has been the best one, Jimbo. <laughs> sure might have been. Holy moly. Yeah. Well, we enjoyed it. Yeah, we glad. enjoyed it. All right. Do you guys need, want to any, say anything else to everyone before we sign off of here? Man, if you get a chance to come do it. Yeah. Come and do it. Yeah. Thank you, guys. You got, Thank you, you Gip. Thank you, yep. Guy. Thank you all yep. so much. Old stories like long lost friends, rodeos and late night bends, history before our time. Round pens and pasture rides Cowboys of the Osage Like long lost friends Rodeos and late night bends History before our time Round pens and pasture rides Cowboys of the Osage